Good evening, Mark. How are you doing today? Are you okay? I'm well. I'm well, Dominica. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Thank you very much for the time and um, the opportunity to speak to you. And can you just tell me, tell me something about yourself, um, who you are and what do you do? Sure. Uh, well, yeah, thank you very much for the opportunity to have the conversation in the first place. Um, I'm, my name's Mark and I'm, uh, I've got the great honour to be the CEO at, at Uprising, um, which means I'm a bit of at the middle of the display business and some of the, the different parts of it and how they all relate to one another. Um, I work a lot uh, both with the team and also with the board and with the outside world, um, a lot with funders uh, and also um, pay a great deal of attention to uh, the young people who are on our programme and the individual participants and alumni. So, so yeah, that's, that's my job. That's brilliant. Okay, so you're the CEO and what was your input into Uprising programme itself? A uh, Very little. Very little? I joined um, on the 1st of April, which was the beginning of lockdown. Uh, so Connie and I have um, never seen that face to face. Oh, wow. Uh, and all of the, all of the praise and um, all of the hard work of getting the programs up and running uh, sort of lies at the feet of the team and of our founder, a lady called Roshan Ali, and the MP for that, and Dean Bo, um, member of the Treasury Select Committee and uh, uh, all-round uh, superstar. And Roshan Ara, um, started work at after university at a place called the Young Foundation and while she was there um, decided she wanted to stand to be an MP and as part of her experiences going and interviewing, uh, meeting uh, people on doorstep, she realised that there was this huge gap of programmes that could give people who'd experienced structural barriers or um, from different uh, backgrounds, different ethnicities, people who were first in their um, university to give them leadership opportunities and access to good jobs. Um, but if you could do that, if you could help people to stand out in a very crowded job market, uh, then eventually that would lead to uh, a better society, a more equal society all round, and one in which um, our leaders uh, are more representative of the people um, who they're here to serve. So uh, mm -hmm. all of it goes to the team and, and um, Roshanara, um, although since uh, first of April, we've moved online, and uh, I can probably, with Connie and uh, others, lay um, a little claim to, to some of that. Wow, that's an incredible goal to to accomplish. That's incredible. And so, whilst creating, whilst creating, whilst being a part of the appraising program, um, why do you feel it's it's important to support young people um, to develop themselves with the employability, the employability and leadership skills? Basically? Sure. I mean, I guess the bottom line is. Uh, if you don't join a programme like those offered by Uprising, where do you get those experiences? And why do we rely on um, old boys networks, you know, to allow people to get some of these amazing experiences of driving social action and achieving change? And why do we still in Britain in 2021 have so many people in senior jobs uh, in uh, the UK who have come from a very narrow group of universities or schools mm. and all know one another. So um, from my point of view, it's an important part of uh, helping you know, modern Britain. Um, and it also contributes to making sure that we've got a really great infrastructure, um, you know, that stuff's happening in our communities, that young people see something that they don't like and, and not only think I want to change that but also know how to do it and know how to go about achieving that in a way that's more likely to help reach their goals. That's incredible. So it is possible for young people to, to change something? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, Marcus Rashford is um, almost quite literally half my age. He's <laughs> two. And on the 3rd of January in 2021, uh, Greta Thunberg will be uh, 18. So, you know, in whatever it is, 20 days time. So if it's not possible for young people to change things, then we should probably let the two of them <laughs> they should stop doing it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And um, looking back at, looking back at your experience you've done, um, what do you think helped you choose your career path? Why do you do what you're doing? Uh, well, I think those are two slightly different questions. So if I answer the first one okay. uh, first, um, I don't really think I've had a career path. I think at various points people have said, um, why did you choose this or what's your career path or looked at yeah. the interview and said well, what's going on here um, 
And uh, I'm not sure in 2020, career path makes a great deal of sense. And my experience has been learn lots about lots of different practical things, learn how to do things, build up experiences, um, engage with lots of different people in all sorts of different areas and just like a sponge, find out as much as you can about how things work and then practice doing those things yourself. Um, and I've had the very great, great privilege that uh, you know, the things I want to do and the things I've enjoyed doing have tended to overlap. So um, yeah, it might be a bit of a controversial answer, but uh, for me, a career path is, um, I'd love to have a career path at some point, maybe when I'm not going to be honest with you. That's brilliant. No, that's, that's definitely fine. Uh, it's a very individual thing as well. Um, and do you have any advice for young people um, who want to make a difference, but they don't know how to do it? Um, yeah, I think it's focus on learn what you enjoy doing, because actually when you know, when you have a good sense of what you enjoy doing and um, you know what you're good at, when those two things overlap, mm -hmm then you can sort of change the world. And in the short time that I've been part of um, Uprising over the past, uh, what is it, eight months, nine months now, um, you know, the, the people who've been on our programmes are evidence of that. Uh, you know, the, all of the social action campaigns that people were doing over summer are just awesome. Um, and seeing the difference that they they can make, especially when you have luxury or the benefit of working with people like Connie and Megan and Andy on our programs or, or Brooks or Emma um, and, and learning the experiences that they've had, engaging with our speakers and so on. I think it's such a golden opportunity. So be like a sponge, soak everything up, be practical. I, think mm -hmm. I would say is, especially in this online world, it's great for us to have a community online and learn online together and learn from one another um, online together. Uh, change happens out there um, and you know online is a great complement to what's going on in the real world so take action in the real world. Um, yeah I think that, that would be my... That's brilliant. <laughs> I think you've answered my last question. Uh, do you have any tips for just to succeed for young people? Would you add anything to it? Um, in today's world, because of, of the pandemic, everything is online as well. So that kind of shifted the um, the world world of working and living. Yeah, and it's a it's a tricky time. It's a difficult time for many people. Lots of personal challenges, uh, circumstances are really difficult for many, many, many people up and down the country. And I uh, I think you're actually right to highlight that, Dominica. I guess. Uh, I'd pass on a piece of advice that was given to me very early in, in my career, almost by accident. I um, was working at a paper shop, putting all the papers together on a Sunday morning. You know, people go in and buy the papers. They all, all the different supplement stuff had to be put together. And I was doing that on a Sunday morning when a guy came in um, who uh, knew the shop owner and said, oh, you know, do you want a job? And I joined him and, and did a job in, over the summer for a couple of years. And um, behind his big desk, he was the boss. Behind his big desk, he had a really cheesy photo of a basketball court. <laughs> uh, and underneath that basketball court, it said, miss 100% of the chances you never take. And whenever I felt a bit of doubt, I remember that basketball court. And there are, I can remember all of the occasions on which I thought, you know what? You always miss 100% of the chances you never take. Um, the reason I'm here is because in April, or uh, well, back in January, when I met with Russian R and she, um, she and I had a conversation about this role, I thought, you know, this is a great opportunity here to work with some amazing people and do something um, valuable and help uh, young people in the world today. You always have 100% of the chances you never take. So uh, that would be what I would like to sort of pass on <laughs> to you and to anybody else who's uh, who watching. That's brilliant. Brilliant finish. Yeah, brilliant ending. Uh, thank, you, thank you very much for your time today. and. Yeah, I hope, I hope young people who are going to watch this, they're going to feel inspired and motivated and hope they will have an opportunity to take part in our courses, maybe, if they will want to. Yeah, so, absolutely. Go to the I'll, website. Yeah, I'll take a, I will will leave the links down below if you want to take yeah. a look. And yeah, that will be it. Thank you very much for your time. Mm. And yeah, enjoy your evening today. Bye.